Hello ladies and gents, MMA community, my YouTube followers, I came back to make another segment. I told you we're going to be breaking it up into several different parts for you guys. And to be quite honest, I had to keep uh, my word. I am a man of my word. I told you just for Christmas, I'm going to start bringing you guys more content, the same stuff I would usually only dish out for my patrons. So once Christmas is over with, these are the types of things that I'd be notifying my patrons. They usually get like 50 notifications per day now that I'm doing it full time. This is my job. My While I'm picking up information and remembering things in my head and just uh, researching as I go along, I'm, de I'm filling in my, 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 my patrons, my people inside that are depending on me to give them the right picks and the comfortability to be able to rest their minds at ease knowing that the people that we're investing in, that we're putting our money, hard-earned hard -earned money on, it, they could be having a peace of mind and sleep at ease knowing that it's comfortable and these are their specific facts. I only do fact checks. I don't give too much on opinions. I give a little bit because that's what they're here for as well. They want a fighter's perspective, a trainer, a hardcore fan. So I try to do so, somewhat put incorporate that as well as much as I can, especially like with the weigh-ins and face-offs, things that uh, nobody else has an opinion on. So I got to develop my own and be the first one to judge something that nobody else has picked up on yet or at, ever will pick up on. So those are different situations. You can't really do fact checks on the thing that you've developed to become the facts before anybody else, you know what I mean? So I try to get those done as well, but these notifications, they'll keep getting, they know, they'll tell you, they get, if you could probably check it out on my Patreon, if you go to the link, you'll see like it shows you a display of the types of notifications and how many and how often I put them out. But for the Christmas to keep, to be a man of my word, I'm gonna keep my word and give you guys the notifications all in one. So I kind of like wrote them down and I'm gonna bring them to you guys for this segment so you guys know who to pick, why to pick them, and also get ahead of the line movement, which is the main purpose of doing this, so that while I'm figuring things out that are helping me keep my uh, conclusion on the picks that I want, they're able to get in ahead of the line movement and take these favorites that are only slight favorites into uh, their picks before they start to become bigger favorites or underdogs, which I have also found that could become bigger or turn into becoming favorites later. Like it happened in so many fights uh, in the past. I, I, I can't, it would take me hours and days just to list how many times we've had fa underdogs turn into favorites by fight night. All right, let's start off with like, I'll, ma I'll make a few, I got, time is uh, sensitive for me right now. I got things to do, I gotta get out of here. So I'm only gonna go through, but there's more segments coming. So don't worry, we'll finish off the rest. But let's start with like some facts, okay? Stephen Thompson's 38 years old almost now. He's at 37, 38 years old. I believe it's somewhere around there. He's only in the last three years. There's a reason why he's being, he's also now, just like the Bronx was being selective and that's why he's on a seven, eight fight win streak. He's cherry picking. They got it inside circles that are, you know, fighters talking to other fighters who spar with fighters and trainers who help, you know, figure out things by talking to their other trainers that are inside their trainer circle and they say hey yeah Tony's not the same guy or this guy's not the same guy so Steven Thompson's at the age right now and the point of his career and he has a following he knows how important this MMA world is you're only as good as your last fight what was the last thing you did for us is what you're relevant how relevant you are so you could be the legend the best of the world but if you fight and lose two three times in a row everybody forgot about you and what you did in the past so there, now that's why he's passed. And you have to also remember what I told you about. Ask yourself before making a conclusion who you want to bet on and what you assume is going to happen or if you should even bet the fight. Ask yourself, what is the UFC marketing machine trying to do? Who are they behind on this fight? Why did they make this fight? Do you know what fight they offered Stephen Thompson? A guy who's at the end of his career that they, they, don't, they know they can't really keep getting behind anymore at this age and his performances, he's been getting knocked out by fighters that he would have put away in, inside the first round or end up now putting him away inside the first round. So when the table, they know that they have no ability to market him anymore. His fighting capabilities are disintegrating. So they offered him to Kazmat. That's the undefeated biggest hype in the entire UFC. So if you're offering him fights like that, what do you think his next offer is gonna be? Nothing's too much far fetched from that, right? So they're giving him another guy who's undefeated. He may be not as much of a hype and as a scary per, uh, of an opponent to pick up on. So Stephen Thompson doesn't wanna be the new Leon Edwards who just passes and passes because they made an example out of Leon Edwards. They pulled him off the rankings and was ready to release him 
along along with Khabib. So he's now under pressure to take a fight in between Kamzat and the uh, the Jeff Neal. He's gonna have to go. The opponent he's got now, Jeff Neal, who's a killer in his own right. This guy's undefeated in his last seven. I mean, in the post pandemic era, he's in the five and zero club, as I told you guys. He's got no losses recently. He's on a seven fight win streak. He's looking more impressive by the day. I mean, by the fights. Every time we see him, he's looking better and better. Uh, so look, he's he's got an opportunity now. He's an underdog, if I'm not mistaken, unless the lines have moved. But if he's not an underdog, he's got to be no more than a slight favorite. So there's a lot of value there. So we're going to go with Jeff Neal as one. And uh, you guys got to keep in mind that if Stephen Thompson was getting knocked out in his most recent fights, like against Sergio Pettis, who's kind of at the end of his career, approaching it, but not really. He's still got some fight in him still left. So, But to compare him to... You know, uh, he made Stephen Thompson look way beyond his years in that fight. The Stephen Thompson the, of the old would have never got caught by those types of uh, shots that he that Sergio Pettis was able to land and put him away with. So we also are learning now that he's becoming chinny. He's not durable. Like the way I said Junior Dos Santos would have fell down if he didn't stop going with that forward, forward pressure because he's the last to know that he's not durable as he used to be, which is normal in fighters. They typically are are in denial until it's like too late all right so yeah these uh these are easy picks well we won't spend too much time i think you guys are already be feel com more comfortable putting your money on the plus side when it's jeff neal fighting against the older guy at the end of his career i don't have to do too much convincing on why we're going with that guy let's focus on marlon vera jose aldo the co-main event there's a reason why he's the co-main event he's got a huge name he's got a huge following and even with that, him being one of the best legends of all time in that division, a guy who went before the Conor era, like a whole decade without being defeated, he was the champion forever. He had the, the most defenses and looked so impressive, like he was unstoppable. That's why until today, they can still, some people, the hardcores especially, will de deem him as one of the greatest of all time. He's for sure a Hall of Famer, future legend. And his legacy is untarnishable. That's how good he was. And even now, if you ask yourselves, like the Peter Yan fight, it showed that he's still as big of a threat almost as he was. And with that Brazilian thing that we always talk about, how the Brazilians are born tough and they got a ability like, look, we found out Figueiredo was in the hospital the day of the fight, the, the night before, and he had complications that landed him in the hospital. He still went and performed as good as he did and won the fight, if not for the point, obviously, the technicalities. We're not talking about that. We're talking about he actually really won that fight, even with the judges being as foolish as they were, giving the wrong person the last round and the point taken away being foolish by the referee, which it was a blind, we knew it. We saw it happening from a mile away. When as soon as they took a point away without even warning him, we knew what time it was. It was either going to be, but then I started, the, the wheels in the motion kept going like, they're not going to rob him to the sense. So I, I, I wasn't surprised to see a back and forth fight like this, that they wanted desperately to use it as a way to make a part two and build it. It's the marketing. This is all about money. Remember, I told you guys in the last video, Let's not focus it. But here's the thing that I want you to know about this fight most importantly than anything else. You guys have to understand that Marlon Vera, his opponent, let's think back. Remember, don't trust anybody who's, because the, we live in a world where you're only as good as your last fight, but that's also working in a sense of like how much they're valued, their stocks. Because of the freak accident, the fluke, literally if it was an inch or a centimeter up or down, that kick that he landed against the hype train, Sean O'Malley, who was like undefeated big prospect everybody was high on, he came into that fight as the biggest underdog of the night. He was like a plus 400 underdog, okay? And they all had given him no chance in that fight, right? So all of a sudden, just not too long later, his very next fight, now all of a sudden against the guy who's proven to be the best of all time, not a new prospect, so he should have more threat, more value to him than uh, Sean O'Malley, his last opponent. Now you're going to take him from being a biggest underdog, a plus 500, to valuing him at a pick him or as a favorite almost. So the odds, the value on Jose Aldo is one of the best on the entire card. Not only is that reason, because we got to take advantage of the recency bias that's moved him from being a plus 500 fighter, in the odds, in the odd maker's eyes, to now all of a sudden being Jose Aldo level. Jose Aldo, just in his most recent fights, had beat guys like Marlon Marais. I mean, forget about the judging and all this. Remember, 
he beat Marlon Marais. This guy's a killer. Contender has only lost against the Hudos with the best of all time. Hope y'all will talk about him later too. But uh, then Peter Yan, look at, if it wasn't a, for a three round, I'm sorry, a longer fight, if it wasn't for a championship fight, if it closed at three rounds, he might have, and, and he didn't get stopped in the later rounds because he knew he had to try to, he didn't have the cardio at his age in his career to go for the full five rounds with a guy like Peter Yan, who's special. He's the beyond anybody's abilities, and he's the best in that entire division. That's why he's the current champ. So against the current champ, not against somebody like Vera, okay? Not against somebody, Vera's nowhere near that level. He'll probably never be a champion. And he's not even as good as, in my opinion, he used to be back in the days when he was in the hungrier days of his career where he was climbing up the ranks. That was the Vera that I would have not been so surprised at seeing odds and still not expected it to be this close. He still, he should have still been a bigger underdog than he is today. But recency bias, Sean O'Malley's big following and name, they're giving him way more credit than they should be against a guy like Aldo, especially. Remember, Aldo, not even Jimmy Rivero's, the young vet, the young prospects, the killers of the division, could make Peter Yan look bad. He looked invincible against uh, even Uriah Faber, who didn't look bad in the fight. He came back, he looked great. He made him look terrible. He, he's such a big, strong guy for the division, very skilled veteran, a legend, a Hall of Famer, annihilated him. Anni and then Jose Aldo, everybody expected the same thing to happen to him. Absolutely not. He, for the first time, showed that the current champion has got holes in his game. He's a human, and he won rounds against him. His game, because of his Brazilian, uh, the Latina type of... Uh, Hunger, the warrior it's spirit, the Mexican, like similar type of a spirit. Like I told you the Moreno and the Figueredo fight would be a good battle of hearts because they all they both have the fighting warrior spirit in them from their ethnicities. You can even tell that they'll bring that out if necessary. You, they'll fight with even going beyond their capabilities and they, they'll put their health behind them and focus on just getting the win more importantly because of their desire to wanting to win. They're, they're real soldiers of war, you know? So that's the same thing with Aldo, man. He's the, he's the best at that. He's, he's a man of uh, honor. He's, he has a legacy, means a lot to him. He's one of the best kickers in the sport, not just the division. Aldo's legs can do some stuff that nobody else in that division can do. So somebody, he's basically what uh, Marlon Vera is, the way he had success in his last fight. If he wants to fight that battle, the kicking game with a guy like Aldo, he'll lose that seven days a week, every day, twice on Sunday. He'll never beat Aldo at the game. So Aldo is pretty much the better version of Vera. More reasons, again, why he should be lined as a bigger favorite. More value, more reasons. I want my money on a close fight to always be on the uh, better side. So this is it for us. It's a smarter bet, in my opinion. I'll teach you guys how to bet it later on. Another thing I want to tell you, any just like it is in a fight, any fight, somebody I told you guys coming off of a loss who you know was a great fighter, is probably a guy you want your money on more than somebody who's on a 10, 12 fight win streak because he's more comfortable, he's too cocky, but somebody who's hungry, who wants to get back in the winning column, that's who we are because they took a lot of stuff from us last week. Everybody had a bad week because the judges, the robberies, the fighters not performing to the way they're supposed to, and we've seen them in their previous most recent fights. A lot of reasons. Now, a guy like me who could have afforded to go and take bigger risks is now going to tighten up his game plan, and I'm going to go from those ridiculous high risks that I could afford to do. I told you, if I lose 100 straight weeks in a row because I bet consistent amounts, I'll never still be in the losing column. I'll, at the overall, besides the battle for the day, if you're talking about the overall, the war, I'm always going to be ahead. I'm always winning. But now, before Christmas, I have people that are depending on me who may not be as up as I am or can afford to take these risks. So I give you my word. You have it. There's a reason why I have never told you to do this before, but I'll tell you to do it now. If you're a patron, don't go out and try to venture and make your own parlays or market. You duplicate what you're paying for in there. You do exactly as I say, how I say. We're not taking any risks. This is going to be like the week before when I told you I was coming off a, a week that I wanted to make up for it. And we got 45 out of 50 parlays cash in for us. Only one wrong. And we didn't take risks because that one wrong I told you was the most risky one that we can. So that's why it was only included in five out of 50 almost. 40 out of 47 if you want to be precise. But anyways, this is going to be one of those weeks. No risks, all rewards. We're going to cash in like crazy right before the holidays. You're going to have an excellent Christmas. So if you had your initial, this is the only time I'll tell you to do this. If you had $400 that you usually invest every week, 
Make it 800, make it 2000 if you can. The more the merrier, you're not gonna lose if you just do it. My accuracy is way too good. My, it's never even on my worst days been worse than it is right. So with the way I'm going at it and the way I'm researching and approaching this one, it's gonna be the best it's ever been combined with the system that we're gonna use. You're gonna make a killing right before the holidays and you're gonna thank me for it later, trust me. You don't wanna be the guy, you wanna see how many messages I can show you? Man, I wish I put more money in. I wish I would've done this. I wish I would've made more of these like you said. Uh, I don't, or how many people came back the following week begging me to let them back in the Patreon because I had to kick them out for reasons like I mentioned in the last video. I'll show you messages between me and people I had to get convinced into letting them back in and stuff. So they know who they are and you're welcome. Anyways, uh, so back on track. Uh, can, can, uh, let's go back to, uh, remember I took the notifications, I'm bringing them to you. I can't do this next month. This is strictly for the patrons only. All right, so uh, Marcin Tibero, uh, Tibero versus Greg Hardy. Greg Hardy is a guy who came from another sport when he wasn't doing good in that sport. He knew he wasn't going to be anybody important. The sport wasn't getting as much attention. UFC was starting to be the new boxing and uh, more like guys from the even WWE. Guys getting paid way better. Like, you know, like what's his name? That big guy in the heavyweight division beat Frank Mir. Uh, the, w, the biggest one of the biggest names in WWE or the guy who fought... Uh, Mickey Gall, they all started a couple of three, two, three different guys came in from WWE. Same reason that this guy, he's a good athlete, which is the only if it was if it wasn't for his notoriety and his fame and his name recognition and the headlines that he came with and the media attention, the publicity recognition that UFC was getting, free advertising and getting their names out there at a perfect time when they're trying to sell their company for a million times more. This was during the time that they were selling and now they've sold it for. From buying it, Dana White bought it for like a million. Now he sold it for like four billion. During those times that it was helpful to them, they brought people like this guy in. He's not the best fighter. He's a good athlete. And that's why they've only been lining him up with the Maurice Greens, our fades of the week that we made a killing off of him on. I was never comfortable putting money on Greg Hardy. I got to be honest with you. But because they like him, the marketing machine, as I tell you, you got to ask why they do. They always gave him real easy matchups, chinny guys, guys who don't fight within their capabilities, Maurice Greens, and he's now he's getting a step up. He's been in the UFC too long. He's been putting some nice performances together, which is also why he's the favorite. Recency by he should not be the favorite. Maurice Tavira, who's the underdog in this fight, should be the rightful favorite. He's the guy who's fought the better competition. The guys like Ben Rothwell, and Ben Rothwell, who just beat OSP, who, who gave a good account of himself against the undefeated prospect who we put a lot of money on in our parlays recently, who I told you was going to win by accumulation of shots. He's not the heavy punching type, but he's more of a tip-tap, seven, eight, nine strikes per minute type of a guy who can win fights like that, and the referee would probably end up stopping it exactly how he won. That same OSP, who took a while to get put away by even a young prospect who's looking his best, is a guy who went all three rounds and, and almost beat Ben Rothwell. Well, Ben Rothwell got put away in just devastating fashion, so impressive by Marcin Tibera. Tibera is a, a league outside of Greg Hardy's. Greg Hardy's a good athlete, but he's not gonna be the better in the exchanges, he's not gonna be the better in the wrestling, grappling. This is a guy who didn't start his career, didn't start his even childhood talking and thinking about fighting MMA. This Polish powerhouse, the, the guy who's de becoming and developing his, into his own finally, getting the momentum on his side. He's coming off two impressive wins now. He's, he's on a different level. This is a real fighter. He's a guy who's been only focusing on fighting since even before Greg Hardy thought about football. So I got my more comfortable money on him and he should be the rightful favor, but if not for the marketing and stuff, all that stuff and that came in the name, the variety of Greg Hardy and his recent uh, finishing knockouts against guys who I told you are fades that we would always put a heavy cash on against them is the only reason why he's opened as a favorite and still as a favorite. So you can take advantage of that before the line movement takes uh, gets out of control. Uh, I already gave you some of the other ones. Who else can we talk about? Let's see here. Remember, our time is uh, sensitive, so I'll come back with another segment. We'll give you the rest of these. Uh, Sergio Pettis is another similar guy who is like a Stephen Thompson, who's like a Charles Oliveira, who likes to cherry pick. He's always been this way, but now that he's towards the end of his career especially, why do you think he's accepting this Moreno fight? Moreno's coming out of a battle with Reese McGee that was a war, back a fight that was way closer than it should have been against a guy who's just known to be good for his heart. He's got he's the he's like a Nate Diaz. He'll keep getting punished and punished, but he won't go away. He'll be in your face, still punishing you, but not getting the better of the exchanges, not punishing you as bad as 
he's getting punished, but it won't stop him from continuing to go forward. Like how I told you Tisha Torres was going to get the win over a girl who's not afraid of losing and not afraid of fighting against, but she had a bad weight cut and this, she was going to be easily like a, the wind can blow her over, I said, and she stopped in the middle of the rounds. She couldn't even finish the fight. She was exactly how I predicted. She lost, she lost in, uh, on Saturday. So this is a similar sense. Moreno's coming out of a war. Same way, reason why Derek Lewis versus Francis Ngannou. Francis Ngannou looked the worst. He just finished a war with Stipe. He even said it himself. Sorry for the lack of luster of performance. The referee kept warning them to engage. They weren't engaging. They got like seven warnings in the fight because the performance and that Stipe put on, the damage he put on him, taking, giving him a, a beating of his life he's never taken in his entire career. He was not the same next. That's why a lot of people say Yoel Romero, which by the way, he just signed to Bellator a few minutes ago. Uh, breaking news, Ariel Wani posted it. He just signed a contract. They've agreed to the terms. He's officially in Bellator, which is I'm happy. He's gonna finally be able to capture some gold before the end of his career. He's in the late years of his. So all that stuff Coker was talking about, not wanting Silva because of his age. They're trying to go with a different direction in their roster. Bull crap, like I told you guys. It's just that Silva was just not looking good and everybody's seen his performances. Nobody wants to watch him fight. And if you don't want somebody else's garbage and that's going to make your company look bad, you don't want Silva. So, But a guy like Yoel Romero still got stock size in him, si a great size, good physique. He gives a good account for himself. He, he, you know, he won rounds against the current champion, Israel Adesanya. Some people even think he won the fight. So if you have a, a, a controversial loss to the current champion, you're, he's going to be the biggest name with the highest stocks in Bellator. And with the sponsors that they have that UFC can't give to their, with the new Reebok contract, the new company that bought them, he'll make more money in Bellator. He'll have a chance at gold for the first time in his career. If there's any fighters, he's on the top of the list of guys who should have got the gold and never did. He got so many chances at it. The Robert Ridiker, two fights he lost, but they were good fights. This is going to be a great transition for him, believe it or not. Some things, you know, doors open, close, windows open. This is a perfect example. Anyways, back on track. Uh, so like how everybody gets rumors about uh, nobody's ever, Paulo Costo, we've never seen him look as bad as he did against Izzy, right? How many can come back from a war like he had with Yoel Romero? Was he the same fighter than the Yoel Romero fight? Probably not, right? That took a lot of da damage. Tony Ferguson, we found it out after his first fight from Justin Gaethje. Uh, beat down that he got from he's not the same he'll never be the same so rest in peace to his career a uh, great guy great guy i lo loved watching him fight but unfortunately he is now if you look at my patreon we've categorized fighters and there's a folder you can go into fades you'll find all the fades all the hype trains so i'm organizing it so you guys can get ahead of all these things in the case in the future uh, i i uh, couldn't remind you about it now you guys have a list to help you in black and white ink all right guys so uh, I'll give you some of my other picks, like the Darons, the Dracos, and all that stuff. The fight with Penny Kenzai, you're right. There's a lot to talk about in this fight. Go to my other videos. I got some good picks. Combined with these, you can get ahead of the line movement, make some good ones for you guys. Um, not much else to talk about. Like I said, I'm in a bit of a rush, but there's a lot more uh, I can't talk about now. I don't have the time to, but I definitely want to get ahead of uh, the line movement on some other ones as well. So hit the notifications, the likes, the reminders if you want me to keep coming back. And I'll do that, but also hit the Patreon help, man. The Patreon is very affordable. You make it up in one tip, one weekend, especially this one coming up. This is, we have different strategies. The reasons why I told you like some of the weeks where you'd have to lose 20 in a row just to break even is because after a few good weeks, I give us the chance to like, it's just like if you're playing at the blackjack table, after hitting blackjack a few times and coming up on the dealer, like a whole bunch of chips stacked up, you start putting a few more chips. That's all we do, that's the correct way of doing it. But then we gotta put it back down a little bit. Let's just leave that to me, the professional. Leave it to me to do all the heavy lifting, the researching, the hard work. You guys just sit back, look pretty, cash in the tickets, take that advice and do yourselves some uh, you know, vacation. We go on vacations, enjoy, buy your kids some stuff, do some good stuff with the money, I hope. All right, guys, um, let me see if there's anything I wanna remind myself to talk about before we get out of here. Uh, no, we talked about Moreno coming back. Oh, yeah, Moreno's not going to be. He just came off of a war. And he, even if he's at his 100%, Sergio Pettis is kind of like the better version of Moreno. Just like how I compared uh, Jose Aldo and Marlon Vera. It's the same exact thing. You can transfer it into the same thing with Pettis. Pettis is a, Pettis is a former champion in his 
older organizations that were close to being as high level as um, like the Bellators and stuff. This guy was a former champion in the great leagues, more than one. And I, I found that mistaken. So this guy's on a different level of championship level material. He could do the same things. He could, This guy's got a highlight real kick. If you thought Joaquin, for those newer MMA fans or casuals, look up. If you haven't seen this, you have to see it. If you, you thought a Joaquin Buckley's Impa Kasagne highlight reel uh, crazy ninja kick was nice, look at the one against even a more formidable opponent, somebody who's known for his heart and you can have to hit this guy with a truck to knock him out. This guy got put to sleep. Benson Henderson uh, did uh, like one of those same exact Impa Kasagne late reaction, like just fell over, looked like a fake movie clip. The guy who ran, I'm not going to spoil it for you. Just type in Sergio Pettis, Benson Henderson. Look at that highlight real kick. That's who we're going to be watching fight. Exciting fighter. Put away the guy who's on the main event of this card, Stephen Thompson. Put him to sleep. A lot of good uh, moments in this guy's career. He's just a different level of caliber. If he could just show up 80% of the Pettis that I've known him to be. He's even showing him. His brother's making it. He comes from a fighting family. His brother's a very good fighter as well. A lot to talk about. We'll get into it more in the next video. And uh, thank you guys. Hit the likes. Hit the subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Make some money.